Some machines are good for random twiddlings, others like this one will serve you best when you know all their ways. Happily, this is a simple machine, and once you understand a couple of its basic concepts, all its global options, all its fun and all its powers will become very clear. What we'll be doing is going through the global menu. We'll also be going through each of the 12 delay types and create a starter preset on each delay type. But before we even get to the global menu, I think the one important thing you should know or decide is how are you going to handle the clock? In my case, I'm going to take an external clock via MIDI, which I've already got plugged in, and the presets which I make are all going to take whatever this incoming clock is. So if I change the incoming clock to 120 BPM, then the presets are going to play at 120. If I change it to 90, they're going to play at 90. You could set it up so that the preset itself takes precedence. So you program a preset at a set rate, and that's what you get when you call up the preset. I prefer the idea that I can have an incoming clock being the master, and every preset will then conform to that incoming clock. Obviously, the choice is yours, but it helps, I think, if you've got that in mind before you get into the global configurations. And certainly, by the time you start programming individual presets, you should have that very clear in your mind. So, let's have a look at the global configuration. The value and the type knobs are the two knobs which control all the parameter stuff. They both turn and press, like a press click. To get into the global menu, press and hold the value knob. You'll have to hold it for a few seconds. You'll see globals come up. Then you turn the knob and you see various options. To go into that option, you press. To get out of the option, you press it again. To get out of the global menu, press the type knob because there's nothing worse than being stuck in a menu. So press and hold, we're in globals. Turn, see the options, click, get into the options, select the options, click again to back out, click the type knob to return to normal operation. So now that we've got that clear, let's do it for real, press and hold, into globals. The first global option, this is setting the time either in milliseconds or BPM. I want BPM. Very good. So I clicked, I've got out of that. Next option, LP lock, and that is for the looper. The looper is one of the things that we won't be looking at today. Looper level, looper exit, bypass got true bypass or buffered bypass. Buffered bypass you might want if you're running insanely long uh, lengths of cable. True bypass is probably the one you want. MIDI channel. Set the MIDI channel if you want. MIDI CC. Keep that on. MIDI patch change. Keep that on. MIDI through. Well, it's off by default. I'll leave it there for now. Bank SC is bank scroll. This limits the highest number that you can scroll to with the preset banks. I'm not sure why you'd want to change it from 99, but there it is. Somebody must have wanted it. Expression, something else we won't be getting into. Dry signal. Now, you can have normal control here on your mix knob, so you've got your dry signal and your wet signal, or you could say kill, which means it's going to kill the dry signal. So this now just becomes a wet level mixer. But we will keep it on normal because we want a normal mix knob and a normal dry signal coming in. Spillover means you will still hear the tail end of a delay, even if you switch it off. I'll have that on. Names. This is for the preset names. The options are on, scroll, or off. 
if you have it on scroll, it means if you create a preset called um, My Lovely Forest Murmurings, then the name will scroll across this little six digit screen, um, which is a bit annoying, I think. So I've just got names on, which means you're only going to see the first six characters of whatever you do. If you have it off, then you're just going to see bank one, bank two, bank three. So we'll just keep it on to on. Preset dump, so you can dump all your presets. MC sweep, this is midi clock sweep. That's on or off, and it's whether you're going to get the sort of uh, delay effect when you change presets or change tempo. We'll keep it on for now. MIDI clock reset. Now this is actually very important. I've got it off because um, I've got a MIDI clock coming in. And if you have MIDI clock reset on, it means that you'll be playing away and you might decide, oh, just change the time a little bit. Or you'll go, yeah, that's, that's not a bad preset, but instead of um, 100 BPM, I'll change it to 50 BPM manually here. MIDI clock reset, if it's on, says, um, sure, you can change the knob, but as soon as I get another clock signal in, beep, I'm going to force it back up to whatever the clock speed actually is. Now, maybe you could think of some creative ways to use that, but um, if you want to manually change the delay time, it's actually going to be really annoying because the machine's going to keep on correcting you. It's going to keep on defaulting it back to the clock value. So even though we want this to pick up the incoming clock speed, we don't want it to keep on insisting on changing everything back to that clock speed at every opportunity. We just want the presets to load at the incoming clock speed and then if we want to change it, that's up to us. We don't want it to force itself to change all the time. So MIDI clock reset is off. MIDI ST is MIDI send state and this just says whether preset CC values are sent to the MIDI out port. Now this might be important depending on your MIDI through settings. I've got it off for now and that is the end of the global settings. Now as you remember to get out of the global settings press the type knob. Now also it's showing the preset name there when we've pressed this type knob to come out of globals. If you don't want to see the preset name, if you want to see the time value instead, you press it again. So it's toggling now. It toggles between the time and the preset name. And the time is in BPM because in the global menu, first option, milliseconds of BPM, we've got it set on BPM. toggle the name. And yes, I've been through those things a few times, but it's nice to do it a few times just so you're completely confident of moving in and out of those menus. So we've done the configuration and as you recall, what we're going to do is go through each delay type, set up a basic preset for each delay type. And to do that, we'll need to know about presets. There's a hundred banks. Each bank has an A preset and a B preset to go up the banks. You press B and tap together, and you see bank two, bank three. To go down the banks, A and B together to select a preset. You select either A or you select B. So banks go up, select a preset. Banks go down, select a preset. And as we select presets, you'll see the little light here saying which engine, which delay type that particular preset is on. Now each delay type around the dial has its own particular little parameters, but it's also obviously going to be affected by these front panel controls. So let's take a look at the dedicated controls here. They're pretty obvious really. 
but they're especially nice, I think, because they're the same in almost all the delay types, with a few tiny little differences in the tape and bucket modes. So let's have a look at these front panel controls. Time. Let's toggle this for the time. 90 BPM. This is the course time. And here is the fine time. straightforward repeats sometimes called feedback in other machines it's affected by the delay type that you're on whether you're using the filter various other things but generally speaking three o'clock is a reasonably safe place to be so it doesn't start to self oscillate Now the mix goes from totally dry up to 100% wet and 100% wet is often useful just to flick it up there just to see what a particular delay type is doing to the sound. The other thing to know is that 3 o'clock is 50-50, not 12 o'clock. So there it is, 50-50 dry wet. Now the filter down here is not quite as obvious as you might think. When it's fully left, it is off. At 12 o'clock, it's at its darkest. And at fully right, it's got a few more highs in it as well. Dark. and then off. Now grit supposedly is input level dependent. It adds slight distortion and other little artifacts as you wind it up. I find it very subtle to the point where I can hardly tell if it's doing anything at all. Strangely enough, fully on, it often seems to slightly mute the sound and reduce the volume. On some modes, it seems to have more effect than others. Generally, I keep it off and then wind it up. Now the last two are for modulation, speed and depth, and they also add a subtle stereo enhancement. And it's worth really experimenting with these before you start programming any sounds. Because it's quite profound what they do. The speed, oh, there's no specs on what it is, but yeah, it must be around 0.1 hertz or something like that, maybe less. Twelve o'clock is a bit seasick. All the way up, must be about twelve hertz or something like that. It's like a fast vibrato. But what it does is add some depth to the stereo field as well in some of the modes. So. It's good to just get a feel for what it's doing. I tend to have it around here, so it's not, well, not quite seasick. Not too deep, but if you turn it off altogether, suddenly things become 
sterile. And if you open it up, you can feel that stereo field come in. profound difference there and the reason why I say it's worth experimenting with this and setting it where you like it is because there's a knob memory more or less and as we go around these delay types programming each sound um, as we go through each one of them these knob positions will be the default for each one as we go around so we don't have to keep on um, you know activating them and resetting them whereas if we sort of said oh well if we're creating a default bank why don't we just go around the presets find presets that we like copy them into position and be done with it well that's because every time we copy in a preset we'd have to readjust all these controls because everyone is going to have a different speed and depth for example maybe it's got grit maybe the filter's in a different position um, and we'll be adjusting it for every single one. Whereas I think if we're creating a default set of presets, it's sort of nice to decide on your modulation speed and depth yourself. Leave it at that for most, maybe all of them, have the grid off, have the filter maybe off, and then you know for every preset when you're actually coming to um, doing tracks, um, you go, right, now I'll do something with the filter or now I'll see whether the grid does something or whatever so you're not starting from some random different place on every single preset um, but you know where you're starting from so that's why i think that's a superior way to do it especially as i say with this modulation section which makes such a difference in the overall stereo feel as well as just that subtle pitch modulation. So we've set up the global values, we've had a look at the front panel controls, we know how to go up and down in banks and how to select a preset within that bank. We can toggle between the preset name and the speed. Now each preset also has some parameters. To get to that, press the value knob. Now if we press and hold, we'll get globals. If you just give it a quick press, you get parameters. Again, to back out of it, press the type knob. So a long press will get you globals. A short press will get you into the parameter settings for that particular delay type. Let's go on to digital. parameters. Now if we turn the knob we'll see the parameters for the digital type. Now some of these settings are common to every delay type. Now how do you know when you get to the ones that are common? It's because you get to tap division. That's the start of the common parameters. So for example in the digital type we've got smear, high pass, repeat dynamics, then we get into tap division. If we go up to the next delay type, press parameters, got time to, repeats, mix, high pass, config, tap division. So now we know we're on to the common parameters. So let's just have a look at those common parameters before we get into the delay type specifics. Tap division, press it to see what we've got. Quarter notes, dotted, eighths, triplets, and sixteenths. Generally speaking, we'll be keeping these at quarter notes. Boost adds a little bit of volume. Cuts a little bit of volume to that particular preset delay just so you can easily match it up. Press it again to back out. 
turn it for the next one. Persist. That is the, remember how in the global settings we could turn on uh, trails more or less so that the delay will continue even if we switch it off. You can also configure that on a per preset basis. So we've got persist on. Name is where we will name the preset. EP is expression pedal. It's either on or off. EP set is to set the heel and toe position. Tap is an important one. It's to do with tap tempo or tempo more generally. Press that and the choice this year is global or preset and this is a very fundamental choice when you're setting up your presets. If you choose preset it means when you go into this preset it will pick up whatever tempo it is that you have programmed into the preset regardless of incoming clock. If you press global it means it will go with whatever the global setting is and in that case we've said the global setting will be the incoming clock. So We'll leave that on global. MIDI clock is on. And it's simply asking, will this preset accept MIDI clock info? And that is the end of the common parameters. So as you go through the parameters in the delay types, as soon as you get to tap division, you're into the common parameters. So anything in front of that is specific to that particular delay type. So now at last we come to it, a walk through each of the delay types around the dial. We'll look at the delay type specific parameters and then for each delay type we'll save a starter preset. First one we'll look at is digital. Let's just make sure we've got these set where we want them, maybe take the depth down a little bit. Because this will be the setting for every preset. The grip will take down the filter up there and mix it 50-50 repeats reasonably modest the time at 90 doesn't make any difference because we'll be taking the global clock preference on every preset that's pretty good let's have a look at the specific parameters for the digital delay type so we'll press the value knob get to parameters turn the knob smear is off High pass is off. The high pass, oops, the high pass goes to on all of them that have a high pass, and that's just about every delay type goes to 900 hertz, which is pretty high. That's uh, well into the mids, really. Remaining one is repeat dynamics, currently off. So compare that. The repeat dynamics changes the way that the repeats trail off. It's a reasonably subtle effect. If we put it on, we'll keep it off for now because this is going to be a very vanilla setup for every preset. We'll keep that on quarter notes. That just leaves us, well boost we won't do anything with, persist that's trails, leaves us with the name so we'll click on that. Now the way I'm going to do the names here is start with number one with digital and just go one two three four five six blah 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 around the dial and then what the delay type is. So it's blinking change the value with this knob. There's one, go to the next letter. So through the miracle of editing, 
there we have one digi. So back out of that, back out of the parameters. But what we do want to do now is to save this. Uh, save is a long press and hold here. We see save come up. Now we want to go to the bank. We want bank one. There it is, bank one. And then is it A or B we want to save it on? We'll save it on A. There it is. We can toggle the name. One digi. Let's also save it to the B parameter though. I like to do that because we've set A up as our uh, vanilla starter. And when we come back and go, oh yeah, we'll use the digital delay or it, you know whichever one we've saved it on, you fiddle with the controls, you go, oh yeah, that's reasonably nice. Maybe it's something actually quite complex and you think, well, I don't want to overwrite my vanilla one. And then usually you go, oh, now what bank is it that I hadn't saved something on? And you maybe have to consult a bit of paper that you now can't find or you put it in some random high number thinking, oh, well, there's probably nothing I've saved up there. And then you wonder whether you're overriding something that might be good. Um, so it's all a bit of a pain. So I think a nice way to do it is we'll set the vanilla one up here. We'll copy it into here. So we know that in bank number one, which is Digi, A and B are the same. So if we go fiddling, we can just copy it into the B patch and we'll have two nice presets on each delay type. Just a nice way to organize things, I think. Now, press and hold, see save come up. Now, because we're already in the bank that we want, we can just press B. Saving, complete. There it is. One digi, one digi. Of course, they've got the same name because we didn't change the name, but that is fine. We know what we're on because of the A and B lights. And if you change something, you notice that the color of the light here changes. To let you know that you've modified something and notice if we manage to return the controls back to their original settings, it changes back to green. But let's keep moving right along. Delay type number two is dual. Press value, go into parameters. What have we got under dual? We've got time two. Let's get back onto our super simple pattern here. Time 2 is a time division of whatever the main time is. That might be alright for a starter. Repeats. This is the feedback for the second delay. The mix for the second delay. Keep all of those at nice conservative settings. And then we're on to high pass. But again, we'll keep the high pass off. Config series. So one delay feeds into the other or parallel. Let's hear the difference. Now we've got a very definite stereo field. Timeline doesn't have that many ping pong style delays. So let's leave it on parallel. So we've got the left and right fields to tap division which means we're on to the common parameters now these other settings here will leave as they are so each one has roughly the same um, settings per preset so we know when we go to any of these presets we haven't done anything with the filter or the grid and we've got a pretty standard conservative sort of modulation setting now we want to save this into bank 2 so press and hold so save come up now we choose the bank bank two 
Uh, but we didn't give it a name, did we? So what do we do if we're halfway through a save sequence? We want to back out, press tap. Now we're back into the parameters of that delay type. And there is name, press name. Well, we don't want, we don't want digi, we want two. And we scroll over and this is dual. So yay, we can keep the D. So we've done that, back out of that, press and hold to save, we want bank 2, press head A, toggle to the name, 2, dual, let's save it into B, press and hold, it's in save mode, we're in the bank we want already, so just press B. Saving, complete, done. Sort of funny display it has there, but anyway. Uh, we can toggle the name just to make sure. All looking good. Let's keep going. Engine number three is pattern. Parameters for the pattern delay is pattern number. patterns including number 16 which is early reflections that's for creating sort of reverby things so there's all sorts of interesting things in here but we'll keep it on number one Smear just smears out the attack time, but we're going to keep that off on all of our presets, just like we are going to do with high pass. We'll keep that off. Tap division, so we know the the specific parameters for that delay type. We have finished. It's got quite a long repeat on it, hasn't it? So. Turn that down just for this one. Boost, persist, name. Back out of that. Back out of that. Now it's showing that name because we've saved the name, but we haven't actually saved the preset. So press and hold. Save comes up. Toggle to the bank. We want bank number three. Okay. Press and hold again, save, B. It's quite good, I think, to keep doing this just because it then gets you into the mode where whenever you want to save something, in fact, it's no big deal. It's easily done. And you think, oh yeah, I'll quickly save that, copy that, move that around. You're not reluctant anymore to program things because you go, oh, how do I save it again? And where am I going to save it to? And it's all a big mess. So the more you save, the more you name, um, the less of a hassle it becomes. So let's move on. Next engine. Number four is reverse parameters. Smear. High pass. And then we've just gone into tap division. So this is a case where these sort of things would be better perhaps on a 16-bit situation where you've got nice big chords and a slow ambient sort of a thing. Bit. 
it's all going to be very dependent upon what you're playing it with, isn't it? But let's just leave it at that for now. Name for verse. Go to that. Press and hold to save. Now it's bank number four. So there it is on bank four. Okay. Press and hold. Save comes up. We're in the bank. Press B. Saving. Complete. There it is. I don't really like the way it shows this bank and then the name, depending on what mode you're in. Let's see if we can change that. We'll go back into the globals. Keep going until we see names. Names is on or scroll or off. If we go off and then back out of that, we just see the bank number. So if then we go down A and B, down A and B. Put it to on, then we see that. I think we've just got to put up with the fact that in those other modes, briefly, you see this, which is the actual bank, and then you see the start of the name, which is sort of funny the way it'll momentarily do that, but there it is. Let's keep going. We're up to ice. Parameters here. Interval. So this is the pitch of the slice. So ice is like um, what some other pedals might call shimmer. Interval being the pitch. Goes from one octave down to two octaves up. Let's keep it at one octave. This is the size of the slice, short, medium, or long. Medium, blend. Now this is from dry to ice. So it is, it's like a secondary mixer. Sure, we've still got the main mix here between the dry signal and the wet signal, but we've also got a specific one inside the actual engine dry and ice. So let's play with that as we do this. profound effect really and if we turn the main mix up so it's all wet with there especially then you start playing with the pitch interval as well smear is another interesting one especially in this mode keep it about halfway high pass leave it off tap divisions still on a quarter note Save, bank number six, so there's ice, we'll copy it into B, save, into B, saving, complete, all done, toggle the name, five, ice, there it is.
engine 6 is the ducking engine. Let's get a more complex pattern going so we can see what's happening. Now the first one is sensitivity. Now the higher this is, the harder it's going to be ducked. So the harder it's going to be for the delay to come through because it's so heavily ducked. I'll leave it at that because the next one works with it. This is release, so this is how fast you get full delay after it stops activating. So, I mean, we could put it all the way down. Feedback is either normal or gate. So normal is whatever the repeats is set to, and gate is um, nothing until the ducking gets activated. So we might leave it on gate just because it makes the ducking effect much more obvious. Just tweak this up a little bit more. Go back to the sensitivity. quite like that I think because it makes the ducking effect a little bit more obvious about what's going on. So tap division, that means the end of those specific parameters down to name, engine number six. Duck. Press and hold. Bank six. A and hold again, save, B, top of the name, engine six, duck. Next engine, number seven, which is swell. Parameters here, rise. Let's have a listen what we've got so far. Actually, let's go back to that super basic one. Rise is the attack time in seconds. So we get up to two seconds, we're not hearing anything. Now this is going to be very dependent upon what pattern you've got, what BPMs you're at. All we can do is set a sort of a vanilla one to begin with. Let's do that. 
smear, well we know what that is. Let's see what it's like with it off. You can hear it coming in there. It's the sort of thing that benefits I think from a bit of smear, so let's leave it halfway so we've got something to play with. High pass is off. We're up to tap division. We're on 16th from the last one. Let's take it back again. That's all right. And we're on to name. Swell. So we're up to bank seven now. it again, B, there it is, 7, extension is tremolo, let's see the parameters, LFO, I've got 5 LFO shapes, triangle, square, sine, ramp, saw, let's have a listen. Sign. Speed of the LFO, this is as a ratio of whatever you've set for the BPM. Now I tend to think here it's having, it's good to have something that is not exactly the same as the pattern, because otherwise it can get lost in the pattern. So, let's see. all the way up. off just because we've got the high pass off on everything else so then we'll know that on all our presets we can add in a high pass leave it on quarter for much the same reasons there's no boost persist name okay so we're up to engine number eight which is tremolo eight Oh, 
sometimes you get lucky. Trim, press and hold, save, bank 8, A. Okay, next engine, number 9, which is filter. good now it is has some similarities to tremolo in that it begins with LFO in this case though we've got a lot more uh, we've got a lot more shapes so if it's a plus it's talking about polarity triangle positive and negative actually let's have a listen to how that changes things So it's where that LFO is starting. So that can have quite a big effect. Is. Let's put it on. Positive square. This one is speed. Just like tremolo, this is in relation to the BPM. Yeah, so you can have hours of fun with this sort of stuff. Let's go for that. Depth. Turn it all the way up just to be a bit interesting. Filter Q was just resonance. You can get pretty vicious if you want to. And in the case of the DB01, which has got a polyvox filter, you can get a much more traditional sounding filter out of it with this sort of delay effect. But yeah, let's keep it about halfway. Now, this is the location of the filtered effect. And now I wish the Zen delay had this. It can be post the delay or pre-delay. So we'll listen to the difference that makes. So now pre-delay, if we go back to speed, This is a great little engine, have a lot of fun here. Ah well, enough fun. Name. Nine is the filter delay. Press and hold. Bank nine. A. Press and hold again. B. Nine. Filter. That's a beautiful sound. So the next engine is lo-fi, start it up, parameters here are sample, so this is the, oops, sample rate, it starts getting really nasty at 4 or below, goes all the way up to 96, but if we're going to be lo-fi, Let's be serious about it, 4 kilohertz. Next one is bits. 
got to at least be 8 bit if you're going to be low fi surely. Then you can keep going. Until it really starts to break up. But we'll be classic, we'll go for 8 bit. The mix. Now similar to the ice setting, this is the dry and the lo-fi signal. So you could go all lo-fi if you wanted to. And then you've got the mix here as well. Ten towards the lo-fi. Now vinyl is an interesting one, it's off at the moment, there's two settings, it's dynamic, it means you'll get crackling in the delay repeats, hear it a bit more clearly there I think. going turns to S which is just static so you just get this constant little crackle I'm not sure we want to have that on just because you might go for a low fire delay and only later on you go, what the hell is that little clicking I keep hearing? So I'll just keep that off for now. Filter. Now this is quite amusing in a way. The filters, there's eight filters here. It's vintage. Old phonograph. 70s clock radio, megaphone, a cheerleader megaphone, an antique phone, a cell phone, and an intercom. on vintage amp now we're down to tap divisions so there's our lo-fi setting let's go to name save bank 10 a press and hold b Next sound engine is tape. Parameters here, tape speed. And we've got fast for high fidelity and normal. sort of weird lo-fi sort of thing. Leave it on fast. Now in low end, all the way left, we get the low end. And all the way right, we sort of get a high pass effect. Now if you're right into your tape delays, this will all be very critical and nuanced. Now we're on to tap division. Now you might think, well, that's not very many options for a tape delay. And that's because this is one of the modes where these controls change. Filter becomes tape age. Grit becomes tape bias, speed becomes crinkle, and 
depth becomes wow and flutter. Now I'm sure people who are into their tape delays will play with these ad infinitum, getting that exact feel for tape. Left is new, right is old. Now tape age, the tape bias. I mean, it's a bit arcane for me. Left is underbiased and right is overbiased. Nine o'clock is balanced. So let's keep that. Now speed here is crinkle. Left is for a new tape, right is for a mangled tape. Depth, this is wound flutter, so this is tape machine speed fluctuation. So in these settings at the moment, we've got a mangled tape and a rotten machine. It all sounds a bit sort of seasick and terrible to me. If we're simulating tape, maybe we want a bit of that. So let's say we're happy with that. Let's get into the name. Bank 11. I. Listen, hold. B. Toggle. So, 11 and tape. Final machine is buckets. So what parameters we've got here. Uh, single is for one bucket chip, and double is for two bucket chips. Two chips is cleaner. Get for single. Now, in bucket mode, filter and grit are slightly different. Filter remains a filter, but left is the bright setting, middle is neutral, and right is dark, and grit is bucket loss. So let's take that down. We'll put the filter uh, in the middle for neutral, and then have a listen. So this is the brightest setting. Neutral and dark. And grit now becomes bucket loss. So the further to the right you go, the more loss you get. So let's keep it pretty dark. modest amount of bucket loss. We'll put our modulation back to our standard sort of a setting. And there's that. Let's go on to the name. We're up to 12. and hold, bank 12, A, press and hold, save mode, B, put all the name, bucket. So there it is. We've got our of preset delays. So now we are timeline masters. It's a good thing, but to become time lords, you'd want to add some CC control, maybe plug in an expression pedal, use the looper as well, but that will be for next time. Until then, see ya.